Everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only Lisa <laughs> Milan. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. I feel like it's been in the works for a while. And um, finally, we're here. My team, they were like, Lisa, you've been wanting to do this for ages. Now's the time. So I'm so excited. I'm excited too. My team is diligent and they're like, she's going to come on, just be patient. Yes. I'm like, listen, I will wait for you, Lisa. I will <laughs> wait as long as it takes. Oh, thank you. How is what is going on? We were just talking. You're having a moment in your closet. You're not the first housewife to check in from her closet. <laughs> Yeah, so the kids are on summer holidays. So I literally just popped to my nanny and I was like, listen, I need two minutes of peace. Keep them out. So the closet is the only place I can find peace in my house. Not even the toilet. I would say the toilet, but no, my kids, they come in the bathroom anyways. <laughs> I love a good closet moment. I mean, what is going on today in Dubai? How is life in Dubai today? Oh my God. Well, for starters, it's about 50 degrees Celsius, which is about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's hot. Everyone's preparing for their summer holidays. So I always tell people the best time to visit the city is between, I would say, October to early May. And then the months in between, the city's dead. Everyone who lives here, we're traveling because it gets so hot. The kids can't go outside. You can't have your nice little brunches with the girls. None of that. So yeah, we're off to Europe in about a week. That's so nice. I've been to Dubai now. Do you, I have like, it all blends together for me. So I've been to Dubai, but I don't know when I was there. Isn't that all? Like I can't. I don't remember the yeah, months I, and I was month. there for a while, but it, I think what it was the was, weather like? What was the weather like? It wasn't crazy. It was hot, but it wasn't crazy mm -hmm. hot. So I'm thinking it was. It was probably springtime. So maybe April. Yeah. May. Yeah, it was probably then. Well, listen, you're checking in, you're busy, you know, part of the reason why this took so long is that, you know, you're busy running an empire. Talk to us about Nina Rowe, you know, as we saw, it was, you know, we talked, we learned a little bit about this on the Real Housewives of Dubai, but what's going on in the life of Mina Rowe today? Oh my God, Mina Rowe is doing so well. That's my, that's my little girl. <laughs> Um, we're doing really well. So we just launched um, our new belly and body oil and our belly mask. So most people uh, know Mina Row for being a maternity fashion brand. So this is the first time um, that we've kind of expanded into a whole new space. So being in the beauty space has been super rewarding, but really challenging as well. So for me, I'm a fashion designer, but I'm a mom. So the brand grows as I grow into my my motherhood journey and um, things happen beyond pregnancy, you know, and so the brand's growing, we're expanding and we want to be that one stop shop that moms go to um, from pregnancy and beyond. So we're trying to connect all the dots, but with all solution products, you know what I mean? So when I was pregnant, um, for me, I, I, the first pregnancy, I was lathering up, you know, putting my oils, mixing concussions and, and, and all of those things. And I was, I didn't get any stretch marks. And so people would always ask me like, how comes you didn't get any stretch marks? And I think in a way I got jinxed because by the time baby two came, I, you know, you're busy with baby one and I wasn't lathering up. I wasn't keeping my skin hydrated. And that's the pregnancy that I got all my stretch marks. So, you know, I always tell people, especially moms, whether you use our products or not, just keep your skin hydrated during pregnancy from day one and beyond if you want to avoid getting stretch marks. So, yeah. How would you describe the style of the brands? Like, you know, I know you're now in the beauty space, like, but you said you started with maternity. Like, how would you describe the style and feel of the brand just for people who may not know? So usually when people think of maternity wear, they think of like frumpy, outdated, you know, dresses that have print that look like your granny's couch. We are not that, you know, we are a very fashion forward brand. We compete with the very best of non-maternity wear. It's basically fashion that you'd want to wear even if you weren't pregnant. 
right? So when I was pregnant with my first child, again, everything stems from Max, um, all the ideas and everything that brew, I couldn't find maternity wear that was hot. And I was a young pregnant woman and I wanted to feel good. And I have this whole thing where if you look good, you feel good. And everything was super outdated. So we decided to create a brand that was very fashionable, but comfortable at the same time. And um, and so that's how we kickstarted Mina Row. From there, um, we went into nursing. And then from there, we went into post-pregnancy wear. And that one came about after my third son and dealing with um, postpartum depression and baby blues, you know, trying to fit in with the rest of society. You know, Instagram tells us that everybody snaps back. And when your body doesn't snap back, like all the Insta moms, um, it can be a little bit depressing, which it was for me. And um, so the, the post-pregnancy line came about because I wanted to have clothes that were flattering to my new body. And I wanted to protect my mental health as well. And so we, we launched that. And now we're in skincare with you know, the belly mask and taking care of your mental and your body and just loving on yourself and taking really, really good care of what God blessed you with. Well, we last saw you on our TVs in a, I say chartreuse green feather <laughs> gown. How would you describe your own personal style? Um, well, when my boobs are not popping out. <laughs> it was a moment. <laughs> By the way, that was not supposed to happen. I I don't think a lot of, I've never said this in public, I don't think. That was actually a wardrobe malfunction. My reunion dress is what you're referring to. Um, and to this day, my husband won't even let me breathe and live because of that dress. But it was actually supposed to have a mesh like in the boob area, but the dress arrived and it was beige. And I'm a brown skinned girl, right? And I was like, listen, I don't want that beige mesh on my dress. So I told my stylist to cut it out. And we didn't know the mesh was what was holding the dress up. So when we removed that mesh, the whole thing got open. But I was like, I'm fine with it. I'd rather my boobs be out than a freaking beige mesh. So that's how that bit came about. But um, to answer your question, I've just been, you know, killing it hanging out with the girls from the show. Um, and you'll possibly see why we've been hanging out so much uh, in the near future. But yeah, I've just been hanging out with the girls. Um, I feel like overall, we have such a great dynamic. You know, we're like sisters. We fight um, and we stop talking for, for a while, but sometimes we get back together and we hash it out and live our best lives in the heat. <laughs> Do you think you were like accurately portrayed on the first season of Real Housewives of Dubai? Like as it relates to 